Hello and welcome everyone. This is our digital illustration storytelling with Jeff Wilson. Here we are. It's our June edition. I uh, can't believe we've already gone through half the year at this point. Uh, so really exciting. Um, as always, we have uh, Jeff Wilson here to uh, to present uh, and to uh, you know to go over um, you know a, a different type of uh, uh, you know concepts and and uh, ideas each session. So thanks again for joining us. My name is Tom Strand. I'm the lead digital artist of this Creator Space project. I just want to thank all our partners in this project. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts and then we have our library partners. We have the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now the cool thing is we have all this equipment available. So digital arts equipment. So we have iPads available through each library that you can just take out. So follow along today and then you can go and take out an iPad that actually has this Procreate software that Jeff's demonstrating with. So you and an Apple Pencil. So you can access the same equipment that Jeff is using and I think that's really exciting. So please do check out the equipment that's available through our partners. So uh, again, we're using Procreate um, and it's a, you know, quite a nice uh, uh, piece of software. Uh, Jeff is our local illustrator, animator, award-winning cartoonist. And uh, you'll probably, you probably have seen some of his work in some of the papers here and uh, yeah, and more to come. So here's the Procreate software again, available for iPad, iPhone, low cost. That's how we chose it and no cost if you access it through the library. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over here to Jeff and he's going to take us on today's journey. Here we go. Here's Jeff. Okay, thank you, Tom, and uh, I hope everybody's having a good morning so far, and it's looking uh, looking like we're going to uh, have a good day in this area, which is uh, Central Gray County, where I am situated at the moment. So uh, um, I had an idea this morning uh, when I was trying to think of what I could teach that I haven't taught before, and it is a, a very conceptual idea that um, that is pretty important to, to me because... Um, being a cartoonist, um, one of our big jobs is to is to simplify things. Not only simplify them, but to give them a little bit of lightness to the subject matter. And um, cartoons are very effective. Uh, they're effective communication tools. They're effective teaching tools. Um, it, the, the cartoonist uh, can bring things down to a very everything to its very simplest point. And now, um, in my work, I've been, uh, you know, in, I, I've been challenged by other people, but I've also challenged myself to try to um, uh, deliver messages from fields that are very serious and very uh, complicated, and to uh, make it make it uh, manageable for for people, uh, you know, who are not as maybe as um, they're not scientists or are not uh, doctors or are not lawyers or are not uh, construction experts. Um, cartoons can be very helpful. I've, I've done work um, for many years with a magazine called Active Living, where um, we, I was challenged on a regular basis to show medical, very serious medical issues. Uh, and and uh, and the uh, the article writers did as well to try to bring it into a, a very manageable um, light, and my illustrations were uh, supposed to help help to deliver that a lot easier. So um, I feel like I can kind of approach this from from that angle. So um, uh, so yeah. So let's start with um, a little medical drawing. That is not really medical at all. It's very, very symbolic and very uh, simple and uh, humorous, I hope, too. You know, that, that a lot of the things that I showed um, in my my career at Active Living were um, were things that were quite serious, like very serious health issues that people were, you know, uh, do, do develop even today. And, uh, you know, how it could be broken down to a way that they could understand it and they could, uh, you know, help themselves to uh, improve their health. So um, anyway, let's start with this uh, drawing that I've done here. I'm just going to turn the camera here to the iPad and just begin to draw this illustration, which is a heart. Now, this I did. I don't know how many illustrations I did at Active Living of Hearts uh, because uh, heart issues, uh, health issues are very um uh, very common in in our society today, and, and the heart, of course, is a very the most important organ in our body. It, it's the one that keeps us alive. So, um, but to to make it, uh, you know, uh, th that is uh, the illustration I'm doing here is basically a, a, a an illustration of a um, that's a cartoony heart. 
Now, a regular heart, if, if we look at it, the real heart compared to the cartoon heart, I'm just going to uh, uncheck that screen there and check this screen. Now, if we're looking at a real heart, uh, you would have a very different type of drawing here. It would be um, with um, tubes and, <laughs> and things going here and there. And, and it's basically the heart is a big, a big tissue, you know, a big muscle. And it's a two part heart. There's the, um, the intake part of the heart, which takes things into it. And then the outtake, uh, the output part of the heart. So if you're drawing a real heart, it's, uh, it's not that attractive looking, but of course in, in cartoons, the heart has been simplified to be, um, uh, just basically, a what we call a heart shaped symbol, but the heart doesn't look like that at all. It looks more like something, uh, like I've drawn here, this, a big muscle basically that pumps the blood uh, from the uh, the vast network of veins and ar arteries we have in our bodies, uh, pumping them into it to cleanse the blood. So it has filters and, and all sorts of uh, things that clean the blood and then the output. So it goes into the, the muscle that pushes the blood out into the, uh, the veins and, and arteries that uh, fill our bodies uh, keep our bodies alive, basically bring oxygen to them and bring the nutrients they need. So the heart's a very important thing. It's a very serious issue if, uh, if it's not working right. But to, um, to show it, uh, I was asked often to show, uh, in this case, a heart that's not well. So this is a, a sick looking heart. And this, this often came up in the cartoons and it was uh, just to show that, um, you know, uh, this is the condition, and, and it was a, a way of showing people that uh, it wasn't beyond their uh, ability to, their their scope to understand, and it was to bring it down to the level of the uh, the average person, and uh, instead of, uh, for example, this way, this doesn't, uh, it's very complicated, and, <laughs> and it's very much the way it is, very realistic, very stark and true, but it really doesn't... Uh, make it easy to understand. So with an article that was, that would be, you know, uh, nicely, lightly written and, uh, and cl uh, well researched, um, this, this would fit in this, this idea. So I have here a heart that is not well. So I, I want to show that it's not well. And I, I kind of started here. Uh, he's feeling himself as if to say, Oh, I've, I'm not well. <laughs> so I've, I've got to figure out where he would feel himself. So a heart, try to humanize this heart or try to make it something, a creature that we could relate to. And I've decided to feel here because it is feeling the heart feeling itself to check itself out, but uh, it's also part of the character's face and it just doesn't really look right there. So I'm, I've got to figure out, this is a problem that I often would come up with. Uh, if, if it's a symbolic heart, where would you, how would you show that it doesn't feel well? So um, as I look at it, and try to think what would this character do with that uh, with that um, left hand? Maybe it could uh, raise up this way and feel itself on the forehead, like uh, like it's taking its uh, temperature or something, like feeling its uh, fever. <laughs> so that was the other idea I thought of here. So I'm going to just try that and see if that works. It may or may not work. I think it's going to work better than what we had, which was the uh, feeling the this area here, the, this uh, chest area is actually in the middle of the face too, because the obviously hearts don't look like this at all. There's, there's no heart that would look like this, but I think on having said that, it does indicate um, the problem. It's very a simple rendition of the, uh, of the actual problem that we're trying to uh, show in a, in a quick drawing. So I would probably put the hand here on the top of the head and uh, you, you can also add some things like, um, oh, like the the planets and the, <laughs> the dizzy line. So it, you could kind of show some vibration lines here. And you can even play with the, the facial expression here too. I would maybe even put a little red tongue here. And uh, I would often do things like this. It's just kind of extend that face down past the, uh, past the, uh, where the border would be like a pouting mouth, I guess. So there you go. That would be 
And you could even accentuate some of the facial expression here, like the eyes here, a droopy eyes. Uh, you can put some bags under the eyes if you like. Darken those up so that they're, that looks quite unhealthy, this, per, uh, this character, an unhealthy heart. So this, it's, it's humorous, but it, it, it also is conveying a very serious message. And this is part of what the cartoonist is asked to do, is to show the, the serious medical issue, but bring it down to uh, a, a way that people can understand. So they might say, oh, I kind of know how this heart feels. I think I would like to improve my lifestyle uh, and uh, so that my heart doesn't have to go through this. So this would be the ideal uh, result of, of doing a, of showing an illustration like this. I don't know if it ever worked in my case. Um, I uh, do know I, I loved working on uh, on active living and I think it you know was a very important um, had a very important impact on the fitness community and uh, uh, it wasn't something that was um, in the, the community at large but um, we did have uh, as a captive audience the the fitness community so health professionals and fitness professionals uh, across Canada was our uh, our main uh, our main subscribers in this magazine. So there's a pretty good indicator. This would have been uh, an illustration I might have done for active living. And um, and then I would have probably done another, except I didn't have a layer then when I used to do these. I would uh, actually uh, take the animation assist off here. I would actually uh, do these um, uh, in, on two, in two steps. I would do one on a, a very rough sketch on a rough piece of paper. Uh, that I would scan and show to the uh, to my boss, uh, Joe Taylor, who uh, would would okay it or say you know do it again, <laughs> and then I would uh, take it to a final drawing. So this is what I'm going to do now: create a new layer, which would have been um, probably with the light board, and <laughs> probably the <laughs> when I didn't have a light board, it would be the window of my car in the daylight, and uh, put another piece of paper over top of it and and draw it. That's just the way things were. I mean, I was uh, I wasn't a rich person. I'm still not, but you get creative. You you think of ways to get the job done that needs to be done. So it would be the inside of my car when my my kids were playing hockey in the arena. It would be <laughs> sometimes in the window of the arena. Is, uh, it's just the way it is when you're when you got a, a, time, a deadline and you got very few options you use what's available to you and that's uh, quite a regular thing so I'm just looking for a nice uh, nice tool here to just kind of clean these drawings up so it'd be a nice toothy thing like the signet here that would be a nice tool let's not do that so let's just try that again I think I need a different drawing tool here. We'll just uh, keep keep looking at our our uh, many brush tools here in in design. Let's try the Inca. This could be fun here. I'm just going to zoom in on my screen here, and uh, and you, my opacity level, as you'll notice, that goes down for this one. And it's probably because I used it previously in a in an illustration that I took down the opacity, and it seems to have a good memory for that too. The the uh, InDesign to toolbox there it seems to collect the information on that and then the next time you use it it'll say oh last time he did this so uh and it, it will do that again we'll just uh, fill that in a bit i'm noticing for some reason that it's not filling this area in here so i'm just going to go over it a bit with the brush and fill that in a bit so that gives us a pretty good outline here for what we're doing. And again, if we don't like it, we can just double over it. And I'm just going to take a little lighter here just to undo that. And thicken it up a bit for this line underneath, because that uh, the way light moves, it would be it would be like that very much. So it would be. Uh, underneath there and we'll take our fingers and finish off the hand here and uh, 
The same with the legs. We'll just take them, keep the line nice and loose. This is what I did when I did active living was use these nice heavy line tools. Uh, grease pencil basically is what I used. And it was because um, when uh, the publisher and I were trying to find a way that I could do a quick black and white drawing and uh, uh, if I did a pen or a, a pen and ink line or if I did this grease pencil line, the grease pencil line seemed to have the most freshness and looseness about it. And there is a there's a beauty about working with these tools too because they uh, give you that I don't know, really nice loose look, and it was a. Uh, it was something I learned in college at Sheridan College when I took cartooning, but it was actually uh, something that I learned from an animator that uh, I worked with in Ottawa, and uh, um, and I don't know if you know the name. The man's name is Bob Jakes, and uh, he was a very talented animator. I remember we we would all love to look at his work and, and just study the way he worked. It was uh, very quick and it looked very fresh and it was the lines were very full of life and very uh, exciting to to watch somebody like that because uh, to me you learn so much from other artists if you you know if you know who you admire it's uh, you follow their work you just basically say well how would they do this <laughs> no matter what the problem is so and i i've often done that what i'd say well how would bob of <laughs> bob jakes have handled this or uh, another one i admired that i worked with was brian lemay another very talented cartoonist uh, art, art animator so I, you know and, and i do study other artists now even today i uh, follow their work and i i try to you know how, how would they do this? How would they approach this problem? Even some of my uh, my really, from back when I was a kid, from way back in the day, like uh, artists like uh, Neil Adams and um, Will Eisner, guys like that who were massively talented and had had great systems for, for doing a lot of drawings and, and doing them well. And uh, so I'm going to take away that line there. And so we've got kind of a nice textured line there. And I'm, I'm just going to use another tool here. We're going to use like an airbrushing tool, I think, and then take that, amp that down a bit and maybe fill in some of these, uh, oops, maybe not quite that much. Let's get rid of that again. So we're just going to amp that uh, size tool down and we're going to some of these spots that didn't quite fill in, just uh, gave them a little thickness there. It's still got that nice loose rough look, which I like. And we couldn't really see in that um, with the background there that we had to have to basically help us find our, our base here. And we're just kind of helping out the, the lines that this didn't quite come through there but I'm just using like a very light uh, airbrush tool here to keep that nice looseness in there I was gonna do that that and I just we're just basically helping out some of these lines that were not quite filled in Okay, and then uh, as I do that, I'm going to take down the opacity and I just give it a little bit of shading, just a little bit of texture here, just because um, to help out the drawing, just kind of gives a little bit of dimension to it, just makes it a little more interesting to look at. a little bit of light source and and we'll put a little bit of shadow on the ground here too just because it, it i feel it needs it there there we go and voila we have uh, an active living illustration which would have taken me about the same time to do it back in the in the time too 
and you can add to that too you can uh, if you want to you can maybe uh, fill that in a bit more some of the areas and what I would often do if I did fill it in I would give it a bit of uh, help with the light and uh, actually do um, change it to white here and kind of tighten that up and then put some dots on it here to show that it was you know it was liquid or uh, you know, it's basically tissue that's in the body. Uh, a couple light spots here just to give a little bit of life. And there are different ways to do it. I, you might choose the way I did it. Uh, you might choose another way to do it. I'm just going to backspace here and uh, try to do, do it another way too. Um, you could have done it uh, in that. Take that down a bit. squared and then use your tool here use your gray and uh, make it like a little window here on the character except it would have to be a lot more subtle there there we go be like a window basically of uh and yeah you can dress that up whatever you way you want so it, it looks a little more interesting to the reader you know, what's what's going on it's a, it's a heart that's pretty rough looking and even the texture of the way i did the line helps uh exhibit that as well so there's our our uh, line drawing of the um of the heart well let's th do things like um another thing that would come up quite often was uh finance uh, things uh, uh, financial things uh that were in the news so if you're doing an editorial cartoon about um about people that have money and people that don't have money uh, that would often come up a lot so uh so i would uh, be doing basically drawings of uh so let's go back to the the drawing tool here so i'm going to use a dark um blue to do that so we could have um we could have two people here so we're, we're going to draw a couple of characters on either side here of the drawing very much caricatures uh or basically um what is the term um uh, they're pigeonholed into the character that they are they they are going to look so stereotypes basically so they're going to be stereotypes of of types of people in the in the world of finance so we're going to have um on the left side here, we're going to have a rich person. So I'm just going to put rich over them so we know until the time comes that they'll look like it. And poor. This is another thing that would uh, come up in, in cartoons. So you, you're trying to break it down in a way that people will, um, it'll be visible, visual, very visual, and they'll be able to get it within a few seconds. Uh, uh, the, the unwritten rule in cartooning is if they get it within six seconds, you've you've done your job, which is kind of sad that you have to spend all this time drawing to get somebody's attention within six seconds. But that is that is the whole the hard and fast rule in this business. So anyway, so we have rich and poor people here, and we have a dollar bill. We're going to have uh, some money here. It's you know what money looks like. It's uh, we don't even have to look at money anymore. It's uh, it's amazing how we uh, it's we've brought it to a point in society that we uh, spend money without even looking at it and or touching it, and uh, that's that can be good or bad. I don't think there's anything good or bad about it. It's just it's just how things are. It's just how our society has uh, has uh, become now. So this dollar here, so we could. Do a couple of things like a dollar bill usually has the little a lot of drawing on it or a lot of um markings on it and the reason for that of course as we know is to make sure it isn't uh, uh counterfeited or plagiarized or whatever so and we're going to put little little dollar symbols here at the corners just to show that it's um that it's money and it could be lira or 
or euros or whatever whatever um, money system you would use. But anyway, we're going to create this pretend money. Okay, so that's that's a, that's kind of an indicator what the money would look like. And uh, sideways it would be a, but you could have the the eyes of the character at the top on a sideways bill. That's not not uh, not out of the realm of thought to do that. And you could put some little slippers here at the bottom, little shoes. Now, how what kind of expression would they have? We could have them. I was thinking of having it uh, with its arms crossed and thinking about who it was going to go to. <laughs> Question mark here. So uh, let's do our our uh, stereotyping here. Uh, what does a poor person look like? Well, a poor person would probably not be very healthy, would not be very well dressed. Uh, they probably wouldn't be very neat looking. Um, you know, if we're doing a caricature of it in our minds, this is a representation. This isn't picking on one person. It's it's a way of visually indicating. Uh, someone or something that we're, we're trying to identify and very graphically, very quickly, very, so we could put a, I don't know. Very simple hat on them. They could have a beard, except if it's a woman, if it's not a, if it's a woman, it would be totally different looking, but. And they might be thinner. They might be thinner than than the rich person because they uh, might not get as much to eat. So we, we need to keep that in mind too, that uh, there are um, a few physical things that might be similar and might be different. So they would... Uh, maybe some holes in the clothing, maybe... Um, hole in the shirt sleeve here, frayed clothes. Maybe pants tied on with a twine. Baylor twine, it could be like a farmer or a, um, I think a lot of farmers are quite wealthy, so it's, it's not a not to say that farmers are poor people, but um, you know, indicate somebody that is is clearly not uh, able to um, appear as uh, uh, as wealth. So that's that's an idea of what that could be. So a rich person, how could we indicate them? So they might be have some nice clothing. Uh, they would probably have an intellectual look. So let's put some glasses on this person. Um, they would probably have neatly cut hair. So we'll put some a recent haircut on them. And uh, maybe a, there's posture certainly going to be different too. It's going to be a little more um, Taller. And we'll put a probably best to put a suit on them, a suit and tie, because that usually uh, is has traditionally been an indicator of uh, of success and financial success. I guess it uh, again. That's not you're not going <laughs> to. I know a lot of people are going to say, "Well, I know people that are." that are poor, that are well coiffed and wear a nice suit. And, uh, and of course, you're absolutely right. There are. And, uh, but the idea for a cartoon is that you're trying to indicate this in a few seconds, what, what 
type of person this is. So they might um, might have some. Let's see what else could they have? Some very nice looking glasses here. Smile on their face, kind of a smug smile. And they might have uh, some jewelry on their hands, and they might have. Quite fancy footwear here. Spend a little bit of time on making their shoes look quite shiny. You can put some shine, some shine gleaming here on their maybe their teeth as well. Maybe have some some gleaming on their teeth. And maybe a little heavier in, in some areas because they are you know they're being well fed they're so um so we have our little drawing here so we've got our little caricatures um we've got our dollar bill or our money here trying to decide who who to go to who to uh be and now, how else could we make this into an interesting cartoon? Well, we could say, um, what could we say? Basically, just uh, who, who will the dollar go to, or who, you know, who, which, which is the dollar's home, or something? So again, we could, if, we, if this was a drawing for active living, I would use the same, basically, the same system for drawing it using that. Uh, that rough line and that's uh, maybe what I'll do now just uh, as I'm thinking of a punchline but this could be an illustration for an article this wouldn't have to have a punchline at all this would uh, basically the only thing this would have to have would be a um, yeah it would just have to be an indicator of uh, of a situation that maybe it that exists so and what we're doing is uh, essentially giving them Giving the person that's reading the article a little bit of uh, something to uh, help help them understand it, or to help them lead into it before they read it, it helps them to you know okay this is what this is going to be about. They will uh, look at it and uh, it gives them a level of understanding right off the bat. So if you've done your job, the people that are reading the article will actually um, come away looking at. Um, at your illustration saying oh yeah that's what uh, that's what this article is going to be about and uh, we'll come away looking at that that's not going to work that that line there so i'm just going to take that off but uh that is something you could add is that uh, gleaming line there for the teeth and that would help to show that they're uh, not i don't know if it's wealth is what i'm looking for but they're They've had a level of success that the other character isn't presently experiencing. And of course, we're not telling the whole story either. The, uh, the article writer is going to tell the story. We're basically, uh, as the cartoonist, doing the article illustration we're just basically augmenting the story so we're not we're not telling the whole story here that this isn't our job in this case now there as a cartoonist if you're doing editorial cartoons and uh, it's your job to tell the whole story beginning to end then yes that's that's got to be clear in the cartoon but if you're augmenting a an article first that someone else has written uh, your job is basically begins and ends in uh, basically addressing the the opening argument or the opening question in the article. So you're basically just uh, showing, okay, this, this story is about um, the rich and the poor and their, how, you know, how money is, <laughs> How money misses the rich, or sorry, how money misses the poor and gets to the rich. That could be the story. And that's basically all we have to show here in this is that we got uh, 
the money has a choice and uh, between two characters show the twine here tied <laughs> and I think I could just do that a little simpler I just take that line down a bit the great thing within um, with a procreate is that you can do that you can make those very strong lines by taking the, the line width down, which I couldn't always do with my um, my physical tools, like my grease pencils that I would used to use for for active living in particular. It was, uh, I either had to use a very fine felt marker to get those, uh, those finer lines or to, um, basically get a very fine grease pencil, which was very, not very easy at all. And our, our poor person could have some sandals on here. And uh, there you go, sandals on, across the feet here. And our dollar bill is our last character that we're well, for the outline, we'll just give it a good, strong, dark line here. All the way down to the bottom. And uh, the other fields, uh, we probably won't get to them today, but uh, the other fields that I found very challenging were the fields of law. So uh, law is a very specialized field and um, and the uh, trade journals that might might have had dealt with uh, law you if you're doing a gag cartoon for example you would have to have a very dry sense of humor there's certain there was a certain style that worked well for it it was very simple like a the style I would refer to would be the like the yeah um, high-end uh, U.S. publication. Uh, so that sort of illustration would work really well in a law um, um, trade journal or a trade uh, publication. And as far as medicine, I, uh, I think the same thing works. Something simple, something that uh, is very uh, um, nice to look at witty um, so if, if you can get your idea across with wit and with sensitivity to the subject matter you you will have success and it's it's not an easy thing to do um, I was talking to a friend this week who who started cartooning back uh, after taking a uh, career in something totally different than cartooning a very um uh, prof you know professional career uh, as a uh, working in an office every day much like a, a person in law or other fields would and he said that one of his friends told him oh why don't you just go to the toronto star and <laughs> and say you'll do a cartoon for them and uh and i i kind of laughed because um you don't just do that. You don't. <laughs> you don't just. You do it, but you don't expect to get a job. You, you kind of have to wait your turn. They, they usually tell you, "Well, we've got eight hundred other cartoonists that want to do what you want to do, and uh, and you're in line, so it'll probably be a long, long time before you you get a chance." But thanks for letting us know. And uh, it, it takes time to figure out the um, the whole system as to what what to do, how it works. Etc. And uh, but this could uh, this could be an indication of um, I don't know. I, I even thought it would be be better if this character was a wallet. Uh, the the um, our, our money our dollar character and and we could change that. This is the great thing about cartooning is that we could just totally duplicate this, this uh, 
Okay, take that one down. And then erase this guy right here. Maybe we kept the other layer though, and this is the great thing about InDesign, or sorry, about um, about um, Procreate is that you can just eliminate whole section of the drawing if if you have an element that you think will work better. So it could be uh, if we're doing talking about finance, an, an equally important figure might be the um, might be the wallet. So you might have a have a wallet here. Um, Let's just see if we can indicate a wallet very quickly. It, it changes the cartoon somewhat, so it changes kind of the So it could be the, the hand here reaching in to pull out a bill so we could have a bill partly coming out here. Kind of fun. A bill, uh, a wallet pulling out its own bill. <laughs> kind of neat idea. It's it's a challenge for sure. Let's just kind of neaten that up a bit. And then we could still do what we did uh, the other drawing here, just kind of lighten that line up here. And uh, yeah, looking to see which one would would like its uh, his his money here. I was just trying to figure out how I did the. Uh, the hand coming out of the other one. So basically he has it underneath there. So I'm going to try to do that, have it uh, coming from this side and so what he's doing in this side is he's basically holding the wallet open. So we can get that these this bill out that he's pulling out here. And it's kind of sneaking out there. So this is a wallet, cowhide wallet, or whatever kind of wallet uh, he might use. And the bill, the bill or the bill, bill fold, I guess you'd call it, is uh, kind of looking a little forlorn and lost and, and, and unsure. So we just uh, we're indicating that quite well. And you could put a, again, you could put the question mark here. Okay, so the article could be about um, who who makes best use of the of, of money. It could have been an article about that. Uh, rich people who, who have everything and, and um, do they appreciate it uh, more because it's so readily available or a poor person who uh, it's not readily available to them. Uh, would they appreciate it more, or do they appreciate it less because uh, because they don't have it? As, they're not used to having it. So th this could be a question in an article that uh, that would be raised for this particular cartoon. Anyway, so the wallet is pulling out some money, and uh, who does who does it give it to? <laughs> so that's uh, and and there are other ideas too. I think we could go go on and on, but I th um, I, I think that gives you an idea. Um, that uh, concepts that are um, are really important. Uh, there's a real market for bringing them down to very simple and uh, easy to explain. Um, something you know, uh, it, <laughs> if a person can explain it in simpler terms, it, uh, there's a real value to it. Is what I'm trying to say, and I uh, I hope that helps. So I'm going to. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of the lesson today. I'm going to turn it over to the Tom. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. That was uh, yeah, fantastic. Really, um, you know, take you know that storytelling. Uh, you know, taking it to to different levels and different areas. I think that's always uh, really important. And um, 
yeah, and then you know that you know starting to think about illustration as it could be you know complementary to like you're saying like articles or uh, you know working with a publication. So you think of uh, things like New Yorker or something. You know, like the the kind of famous uh, you know cartoons that just sometimes you know have have so really profound statements. So yeah, it's really really exciting to see that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just want to want to thank everyone again for joining us. Uh, uh, a great session as always. Uh, if you're uh, we still have our in-person sessions, so we're, we're doing them in June. Then we're going to uh, have a bit of a break. We'll be back again in the fall. But uh, in the meantime, if you're in the in the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, just like I mentioned, you can access the iPads, Apple Pencil, and Procreate software. Just take it out with your library card. Uh, any ages, you just need to have a library card, and you can access that basically through South Georgian Bay, through the interlibrary network. So, you know, if you're uh, Gray Highlands, if you're Meaford, you can access the Blue Mountains Public Library. And Simcoe County has some uh, agreements as well. So there's a, a big network that can access this equipment. So do check it out. And then on the other side, you can rewatch this. But do remember, you can join us in person. Uh, we have our Youth uh, Adventures in Digital Arts programming. We have our June session still. Um, and that is at the three libraries. So if you haven't signed up, you can check that out if for your... Uh, uh, you know, the younger uh, digital artists in the, in the household, uh, do uh, check that out. So just want to remind everyone to, to sign up. Uh, space is limited, so do do, do that. Um, so thanks again, Jeff, for a great session. Just want to thank all our partners in this project again. So we have the Canada Council for the Arts, and then we have our libraries. Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Thanks again for joining us on these virtual, uh, you know, sessions for the Creator Space, and we will see you again, uh, and uh, be sure to rewatch this, and we'll see you soon. Take care.